Today, Jewish doctors are considered leaders in medicine. However, there was a time when aspiring doctors faced anti-Jewish quotas at medical schools, hospitals refused residencies to Jewish physicians, and doctors and nurses went on strike in opposition to working alongside Jews. Despite widespread anti-Semitism, there were some early glass ceiling breakers. Dr. Aaron Hart David is considered the first Jewish doctor in Canada, practicing in Montreal in 1834. Dr. Samuel Levine followed closely in his footsteps, graduating from medical school in Toronto in 1899. Given the discrimination Jews faced at the turn of the last century, particularly the difficulty of securing residencies in public hospitals, Dr. Levine pioneered a new role in his community and became the first Lodge doctor in 1907. Lodge doctors served members of mutual benefit societies, organizations formed by groups of recently immigrated Jews to support one another. Being a Lodge doctor was not an easy job. Hopeful graduates were forced to compete for a small number of positions paid only $1 by each member in return for a year of unlimited service and could be called on any time of day or night. And despite their devotion to the work, they often weren't even considered real doctors by their patients or the wider medical establishment. Some Jewish doctors grappled with hiding their identities to further their careers. After Lodge doctor Abraham Isaac Walensky was denied internships and appointments due to discrimination, he assumed the surname of Wills, claiming he was Greek Orthodox. The name helped him secure a job as an ambulance doctor and an internship at the Mayo Clinic. His skill was finally recognized in Toronto, and Dr. Walensky was accepted at the Toronto Western Hospital in 1918. He went on to pioneer spinal anesthesia and formed the Toronto Jewish Medical Association in 1925. During the early 20th century, it was a group of Jewish women that stepped up to meet the needs of a growing Jewish population, founding several important Jewish medical institutions. Ida Siegel formed the Jewish Dispensary in 1910, offering medical and delivery care to Jewish expectant mothers in Toronto. The free dispensary quickly became invaluable to this immigrant community, many of whom spoke limited English and could not afford private care. Just a decade later, the Ezrat Nashim, a women's mutual benefit society, played an instrumental role in founding the first Jewish hospital in Toronto, Mount Sinai Hospital. One of the founders, Dorothy Dworkin, remarked that no history of Mount Sinai would be complete without an accompanying history of its women's aides. Mount Sinai would have fallen by the wayside time and again had it not been for the unflagging enthusiasm and devotion of its women's supporters. And in 1944, after Dr. Fred Weinberg returned from serving in the Royal Canadian Army Medical Corps, he was accepted as a resident at SickKids Hospital and later appointed chief resident, becoming the first Jewish doctor on staff. Despite innumerable challenges and discrimination at every turn, Jewish medical trailblazers like Dorothy Dworkin and Dr. Levine worked tirelessly alongside dedicated women's organizations to pioneer the Canadian medical care we all enjoy today. <laughs>